Well, one was bought, and Sorry. now like you have to buy a membership. Another one doesn't exist. So I think the whole AI thing is changing so fast um, that you know. And, and I haven't researched. There's probably you know other cool sites out there now. So I would say you know when if you're looking for stuff, you know, for me, I just was playing and searching for kind of cool AI stuff, and that's how I was coming across things. Um, a few of these my wife saw in a presentation at school that another teacher was doing that could be helpful in the classroom. And, and so there's just different ways to to kind of come across stuff. But it's such a fast changing landscape that, you know, from a couple months to a couple months later, it, it could be, you know, things could change. So so anyway, let me pull this up here. Um, why am I not seeing this? Oh, I know why. Hold on a second. Let me get this ready. I forgot I hid Safari. So with Safari hidden, when you go to share your screen, it doesn't exist anymore. <clears throat> All right. Can you guys see this? That's good evening, Glenn. Yes. All right. So the first one that I have here is um, called Claude AI. And you know, Claude AI, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, this is probably the most common type of AI that you've seen where, you know, you can have a, a conversation and ask questions. Um, I'm sure you guys are probably using some site. What are you guys using? Anyone? I don't know that I use anything. Well, Ron, you did a presentation on one last year. What was it? <laughs> you don't remember? Uh, no. Chat, chat GPT. Yeah. Oh, Chat, chat GPT. GPT. That's okay. when that first came out, though. Yeah, these are the most common ones, though. Like you know, Microsoft's got a one. All the all, all the companies have ones, and it's basically for general queries and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it's waiting here. Uh, you know, it's saying good evening, Glenn. Well, let's see. I'm gonna try. Give me an. Update on Milton. No, I don't. Wait. Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Let's see what Claude gives me. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. You found me, Claude. <laughs> well, you have, you have a dumb AI here, you know. <laughs> you, I, I personally, this is my favorite one. I, I like the conversational tone of it. Um, let's try. Give me an update on, on Milton Hurricane. Hurricane. Milton. Milton Burl. <laughs> um, well, okay. Claude, you've done oh. so good work for me. And now <laughs> when I put you on the stage. Just know you don't have to ask right. me about weather. I, about I did this two months ago. I asked it to give me, write an introduction for me. And I'll, so I said, I'm the vice president of the Gateway Area Macintosh user group in St. Louis. Please write me an introduction. And this is what Claude wrote. I'll read it, but it's here on the screen. Um, As the vice president of the Gateway Area Macintosh user group in St. Louis, I'd be happy to draft an introduction for you. Here's a concise version. Hello, I'm, doesn't know my name, <laughs> your name, the vice president of the Gateway Area Macintosh user group here in St. Louis. Our group is dedicated to helping Mac enthusiasts get the most out of their Apple devices. Whether you're a longtime Mac user or new to the Apple ecosystem, we offer a welcoming community for sharing knowledge, troubleshooting issues, and exploring the latest in Mac technology. I'm excited to connect with fellow Mac lovers and contribute to our thriving local tech community. And then hey. it says, do you like me to expand on any part of this introduction or tailor it for specific context? Would they so take the said, the can you please make this more concise? So it's next attempt, you can see here, it says, certainly, here's a more concise version. I'm, your name, Vice President of the Gateway Area Macintosh User Group in St. Louis. We help Mac enthusiasts maximize their Apple devices through community support, knowledge sharing, and exploring new technologies. Whether you're a Mac veteran or newcomer, we welcome you to join our local tech community. Is this length more suitable for your needs? And I would have told it yes at that point. What do you guys think of what it wrote? 
Well, would it be the same if you like did it for like John, our president? Would it just be the same stuff it would come out with? Probably because it's I'm giving it a generic thing. Yeah. The more specific information I give it, the more it will specifically tailor it. But I thought Claude did a nice job where I think Claude really excels. And I have used Claude a number of times when I'm drafting an email or I'm writing something and I would like a little help with polishing it up. And I think Claude does a great job with that. Um, I've got a friend of mine who um, he works out. Uh, well, his background is in game design, video game design, and he does a lot of work with designing educational game design and working with clients. Um, he also does some adjunct teaching at Stanford. And he's told me when he's writing speeches and other things that he's using, he uses Claude quite a bit um, to help you know, kind of polish that stuff up. And I think Claude does a real nice job. Um, okay. Would anybody like to try a prompt here? We can ask it something. Well, Glenn, what if, what if a student uses that in school though, and says, write me a book report on, you know, of mice and men. Yeah. What about How would a teacher know that it's coming from? Well, I, I would say there's a couple of clues right off the bat. And, and I can always tell with my students because the first thing I would ask them is, what does this word mean? Because I know a high school <laughs> student doesn't use that word or the way it phrases the language. And that's the real struggle with AI in schools now, period. Because, you know, <clears throat> how, how do you defeat students using that? Well, I can tell you, teachers are going to more in-class writing and going back to writing on with pen and paper um it is going to be one way because obviously <laughs> ai can't help you there you know i mean if you're having to write it right right out there in class um but a lot of times you can tell because you know the students are not going to use that kind of they're not going to construct sentences that way use phrasings that way or certain words i i always used to love that <clears throat> i would stop presentations in my class when they would use a word that I'm like, I know that they have copied this directly from somewhere. They did not write this themselves. And I would say, hey, what does that word mean? And then all of a sudden they get that deer in the headlights look because they have no clue what it is. They just copied it right down, you know. So, you know, that's kind of your best bet at this point. All right. Would anybody like to give me something they want to try? Hmm. <laughs> Terry, I'm having trouble hearing you there. Yeah, I didn't get what he said either. Okay, does somebody else want to give me a try of something? By the way, you'll notice down here, can you guys see where it says summarize meeting notes? Uh-huh. <clears throat> this is interesting because you can take your notes and put it in here and it will give you a summary of it. And by the way, this is one of the things that you've heard Apple talking when they bring in 18.1. And by the way, for those of you who don't know, and I, when, I, when I get to iOS, the AI stuff has not been put in to um, iOS yet. It'll be with 18.1. But anyway, it'll summarize stuff for you. Or here's something that I have not tried yet. See where it says generate Excel formulas? I do a lot of stuff with Excel spreadsheets. And sometimes I just can't get stuff to work. And so I, I've been curious. I've been meaning to try Claude and see um, if that can help me get the right formulas. I know a lot of programmers who are now using these AI programs to actually help them write programming. And I've heard programmers talk, though, that that worries them because there are a lot of little mistakes that get made by these AI programs um, and so it sometimes is not very concise. Anybody have something you want me to try or I can move on to the next program? How about asking about the storm relief in uh, North Carolina? Well, since Milton didn't go very well, I'm not sure how well this will go. Um, I want to be a little more specific, though. Can you be more specific, Alan? Um, I No, I don't know. Recent storm... Uh, well, 
I, that's where I think we get caught. If you give it, if it's too vague, I think that it might have problems. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's it earlier that it didn't know. It's anything. Hurricane relief, though, it shouldn't be caught up on the hurricane itself. Well, here we here we go. How's this? Well, how many people are? Let's see. What does FEMA? See if it knows what FEMA is. I don't think I want to read all that. <laughs> <laughs> but then you could see it gave, you know, so because I asked it something very specific. So I think that's a little easier for it to handle than something more open ended. Because if you asked me about, you know, relief in North Carolina, I'd be like, well, what do you want me to answer? You know, um, and then it's asking at the bottom, would you like more information on any specific aspect? of FEMA's operations. So then you could ask further. Um, I've had some interesting conversations with Claude, just I start getting, you know, into, you know, you know, different things. And, uh, and I will, you know, end up having a conversation with Claude about something. Now, one of the things is I'm not paying for, um, I'm just using the free version of this. They don't tell you exactly, but you only get so many it's not limited to so many questions, but it depends on how big your questions are. So you're limited to a certain amount of data, but they don't actually tell you. So if you have a paid membership, um, then you get more data to a certain extent, but they don't actually tell you how much. Um, so, you know, I've gotten to that point where like, sorry, you, you know, you've, <laughs> you've used up your amount for today, but it's, a, it's still a, a good amount. Um, mm -hmm. My friend, I told you who uses Claude a lot, he has the paid version because he's using it every day for work. Um, I just occasionally when I, you know, need help with something or I want to polish something off, you know, I, I will use it. Um, How do you, what does the paid version cost? Um, let's see if Claude will tell me or let's see if it's. Let's take that kind of bull. On here. I'm sick of you doing it. Um, I don't know what they call it. not a, it's not a membership what's the word i'm thinking of um subscription subscription yeah <laughs> <laughs> brother yeah i would have to go oh wait it says subscribe to pro down here so let me click on that Can anyone hear me? I'm trying to ask a question. Uh, I can hear you now. There oh, you okay. Go. Hold on one second, uh, though, Richard. Yeah. Uh, so there we go. It's twenty dollars a month. Kind of steep. Yeah, but like I said, I know like my buddy uses it for work, so you know, for him, it's worth it. Richard, yeah. what was yeah. your question? Um, could you ask Claude what is the future of artificial intelligence? in the next six months. I have a feeling we're not gonna get much, but let's see. Yeah, same sort of answer. Well, here's the thing with AI, mm -hmm. you know, when you ask very mm -hmm. general questions from my experience in all AI models these days, you're going to get pretty general responses. Let, let uh, me ask you one question, which might be more specific. Ask Claude what Ray Kurzweil thinks of AI. Okay, but I can't remember how to spell the last name. K-U-R-Z-W-E-I-L. Yeah, that's right. So I'm not going to read that, but you can no. see it, it you know, yeah, and now basically summarize the book. Now, if you go down at the bottom, 
It says, would you like me to elaborate on any specific aspect of Kurzweil's thoughts on AI? Um, so let's do this. Tell me more about... Um, about the singularity. Oh, I'm already doing ethical considerations. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. There's a lot going That's on. That's an open-ended question. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you're, you're getting quite a bit there. Again, I find these all of these AI chat programs, they do better when you ask more specific questions. Um, when you ask more very broad, like, you know, questions, you, you tend not to get um, as good of answers. Like, oh, by the way, the I'm meaning of life. <laughs> yeah. I also noticed, by the way, down at the bottom, if you subscribe to Pro, you get five times more usage. So five times whatever it is you get without you, it. You don't. So anyway, I, I like Claude because I just, I like Claude's conversational style better. I've had more success um, than I have with the other programs I've tried. And, you know, I got to tell you, every time there's an update, social media gets in an uproar and complains about it or whatever. But you know, I guess that's going to be the case with every piece of software that gets updated. All right. So anybody have any questions about Claude? Otherwise, I'll move on here. One quick question, uh, Glenn. Do we, yeah. does Glenn, does, um, does uh, Claude ever tell you the source of the information that it's presenting? Well, does, it ask Claude. Come with, does Claude come with footnotes? Um. <laughs> Hold on. Let's okay. For a bibliography. I don't know why it makes me click. <laughs> hmm. Um. Nothing specific. Well, that's pretty specific for nothing specific. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, hold on a second. Let's go back to FEMA. May I add something? Yes. I just tried it while you all were talking. And um, as you all know, most of you know, I am retired down in Costa Rica. But I'm looking to do something, and there's a company close to me that does customer service, people calling in from all over the world. So, so I just put it into Claude, and it gave me a full page that I could give them as sort of a resume. Yeah, yeah, it'll do that. By the way, I'm out. If you notice the message at the bottom, you're out of free messages until 12 a.m. Yeah. So I've run out of my well, time to move on. <laughs> And and here's the thing, guys. If it's giving you big long answers, you're going to get less questions. If it's short answers, you're going to get more. It's all about the data. Hmm. All right. Well, let's one, go. One comment, Glenn. Yeah. Back when you were uh, introducing yourself as yes. uh, a vice president, some of the wording looked a lot like the purpose statement on Gamma's Facebook page. And, and I'm sure that what the all these AI programs are doing is going out and searching for that and then looking for that information. Yeah. All right. My next one I have here is AI emoji generator, AI emojis. And this is kind of fun to play with. Um, although, I wonder where my... Ooh, look at all those. Yeah, I wonder, though, where my... Well, I had some that I did for the last time when I presented this, so I'll, I'll redo them. And some are better than others, obviously. You know, I, th I think this one is, is pretty good. <laughs> I don't remember having all that hair. This one down here, 
Uh, let's see. Well, so fingers are kind of weird there, but <laughs> so you can see. Uh, I I actually did also. Well, he saw the he saw the phone up. Hmm. So again, some of them look pretty good up here. As you get down here, I don't know what these are. <laughs> How about if we go Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs? No, it just gave me individual ones. It didn't put them together. Okay, oh, somebody want to try one, and I will. Steve make... Wozniak holding an Apple IIe. And it makes me keep writing Wozniak. <laughs> uh, I guess I got to go like that. Whoop. Sorry. Holding an apple. We got an Apple IIe. <laughs> I like this one of Steve Jobs of the plate of apples. No, doesn't look like we. And the ones at the top are probably more relevant, I guess. I guess, yeah. All right, somebody want to give me something non Apple? No. Uh Space Shuttle Columbia. I don't know if it'll give you Columbia exactly, but, you know, it'll give you space shuttles. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, on the same theme, one more. International Space Station. I wonder if I can just do ISS. There yeah. you go. Oh, my gosh, it mm. worked. Yeah. And by the way, I've taken emojis I wanted to create, and I've used them then in you know, documents or, or messages or things like that. Um, now you can also do weird things. Um, let's see. I think the one they always say it, shark wearing a top hat. Yeah. Hey, there you go. <laughs> um, wait, let's see if we can get a hurricane here. <laughs> Okay, at least it knows what a hurricane is. <laughs> so, yeah, anybody want to try anything else before we move on? How do you do you just drag one of that into something like you a document? Well, here's the thing. I haven't tried dragging it, but let's say, you know, I open, you know, this Barbie haunted dream house. I would just do a little screenshot, you know, shift command four where I can drag it around it and save it. Now I've got a little empty image. Can't you just know. share? I've never tried dragging it. That may work. You'd have to, you know. There's this show button right in her. Yeah, you can share. And this would allow probably me to, yeah, it's giving you some different ways to share it. So I could send it a message or mail if I wanted. Mm -hmm. What I don't know is what this Flux AI playground is. That's new. So let's go ahead for cost, yes. is this a uh, per item you pay, or do you pay for unlimited free. access, or what? It, it's free, at least. I don't know anything about this Flux AI playground, but the other part is just is free. I, you know, I'm using emojis. Yeah, it's free as far as I know. I, I don't know of any, you know, cost to it. No. Oh. Um, hmm. So I guess you could create your own thing with uploaded images. I'll have to play with this. Um, so it looks like you're uploading unique things and then it creates stuff. Well, that could be fun to play with. I might have to play with that. Oh, no, well, that costs, of course. Here you go. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to use that, then, then now you're into paying. But the AI emoji thing is free. And so you can see, like, you know, all kinds of weird things that people. Yeah, so whatever's on people's minds, I guess. <laughs> I, I was idea. doing um, presidents and I, I it actually was pretty good. Um, well, if you yeah. want to. Let's see. Um, let's 
Some of them look like photographs. Some of them are pretty are pretty good. None of them are photographs, but they look you know more realistic. Yeah. Uh, I wonder the guy with the machine gun has. <laughs> you you're getting you get very weird results like oh they have red eyes. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's like a Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan zombie. zombie. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you know, so it's kind of fun. You can do this with, you know, famous people and things like that. Um, I, I, you can also do it with fictional characters. Um, I don't know, somebody give me a fictional character, a uh, well-known. Mark, uh, no, Huckleberry Finn. Well, it gave you Mark Twain. Superman. Yeah, that one I'm sure we'll have quite a bit. Yeah. So anyway, it's, you know, it's kind of a fun thing to play with. All right. Our next one is the magic. It's goblin tools, excuse me. And it's got a number of tools here. So um, this first one is magic to do. And so it, it, I'll read here what it says. Acts as a standard to-do list with some special sauce. Try the wand button and let it automatically come up with the steps you need to accomplish your task. Um, the spiciness level gives the tools a hint about how hard or stressful you find the task. The spicier, the more steps will attempt to break it down into. So I haven't played with this one as much, but let's say... And and um, somebody give me another errand. Voting. What? Voting. <laughs> uh, voting something. Cut the grass. All right. Get so the these, bar. Okay, I think we got enough here. So any of these, if I hit the little, I can break it down by hitting this. And now it's telling me like how to do it properly. <laughs> and estimate time. Okay, it didn't do anything there. Uh, let's try one of these others. Okay, it's telling, oh, I'd say grocery shopping four hours and 25 minutes. Wow. Well, that's a pretty slow grocery shopping. <laughs> or even a lot. No kidding. Uh, yeah. See what it says for voting. Well, it depends on how busy the polls are. Yeah, I guess. it could be a 30 minute line. I, I can't cut my grass in an hour, and I very rarely do I get to vote in 30 minutes or under. So anyway, that's the first part. It's the magic to do. It helps you with lists. The next thing is interesting. It's formalizer. So you can put down any thoughts and it will turn it into, so you can make your text whatever you want here in this drop down list. So um, let's see if I put, I'm just trying to think of something off the top of my head. Um, The quick brown fox jumped over to the lazy dog. I want to raise now. Make it more professional. Let's see what they give us. <laughs> I would like to discuss the possibility of a salary increase at your earliest convenience. Thank you. So it depends, it depends on what you're That's more professional. Um, but I could go more formal, easier to read, more, less emotional, more passionate, more sarcastic. Uh, more sarcastic could be kind of fun. I don't know how it would take I want to raise now and make it more sarcastic. Oh, sure. Let's definitely not talk about it. Because who wouldn't want to keep earning the exact same amount forever? <laughs> so. Get out of the door, yeah. Not only is it fun to play with, but I find these tools a little handy. Like, again, if you're writing an email, you know, one of the things that I have found with our use of emails professionally is that you know, when you're not talking to somebody face to face, a lot of things can be construed about tone that may not even be meant. So this would be a nice tool, you know, that you could put down there and then see, you know, have it, you know, 
kind of change the language a little bit for you. And that leads me to this one. It's called judge. <clears throat> Am I misreading the tone of this? Um, somebody give me something to put here. Just action over. I don't want to talk to you ever again. Come on. So it says the text, I don't want to talk to you ever again, conveys a strong emotional message, rooting in feelings of frustration, hurt, or resentment. The definitive nature of the statement suggests a finality that indicates a serious break in communication or relationship. This can imply the speaker has been deeply affected by prior interactions with the person being addressed. And well, then, how, about, how about I love you? Well, hold on. I was going to do suggest a response. <laughs> oh, suggest a response. And it takes it and says, I completely respect your feelings and understand where you're coming from. If this is what you truly want, I'll honor your decision. Just know that I appreciate the moments we share and I wish you all the best moving forward. That Although I'm like not sure most out. of us would respond <laughs> like that, frankly. And you you could respond by signing it off, you absolute jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the door hit you in the butt. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Ron, you want, I, would you want me to put I love you? Yeah, it does that. Whoop, sorry. It's a little slow this evening. <laughs> wow, this gets uh Whoa. all the different kinds of love. <laughs> now we know why people don't say it. <laughs> Just a response. So that's the judge. It's kind of interesting. Again, you know. If you're writing an email to somebody, you could put that in here and see, well, what is the, how is my tone coming across? Uh, the next thing is the professor. So give me a crash course. Um, in hurricane strength. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I'll just. I don't know why it has two different windows there, but yeah. So it's explaining how hurricanes develop. Yeah. Or. <laughs> and there you go. There are your categories. And we've been hanging out here with Milton. No kidding. Yeah, I, I'm kind of, some of you know, I'm kind of an amateur meteorologist. I've got weather equipment up on my roof. And uh, my my wife says to me, whenever these hurricanes happen, she'll be like, how can you sit and watch that for hours? You know, these weather channels. <laughs> can you scroll down to category two? You mean up? Well, up, yeah. Yeah. Um, because that's where it's going to go over Disneyland. Yeah, I would be surprised if it holds two that far. I, it might be more one or two. But yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, you know, we've got relatives in Orlando. And, you know, I was telling my wife, yeah, they're going to get a hurricane, even though they're 80 miles inland from the shore. So Yeah, for sure. So the professor, you can ask and he'll tell you, estimator, um, tell me how long this is probably going to take. Um, and also, it does have magic to do. So let's say, build a treehouse. Forget, I can't just hit return. I have to press the button. One to two weeks. Hmm. And then if you click this, how hard is it? It's giving you from one to five how hard they think this is. It says a one? Uh, no, it's giving you a two. Oh, a two. It's just saying from one to five. Anybody else want to try something here? Paint my kitchen cabinets. <laughs> there you go. Eight to 16 hours. Change the hours to weeks and you mm. might be closer. Well, I mean, both cases. Just, I, it's kind of, I'm, presuming it's presuming that you're just continuously working when you can you know yeah so 
Um, all right, compiler. Um, so you can just make, if you make a list here, I, I, I've done this once, but I don't remember. So it's like just, um, what does it mean? Brain dump, but just all the stuff you want to do. Yeah, I, I think so. Let's say, I, I'm wondering if I just say, you know, if I do this with lawn, um, take a nap, feed the cat. Let's see what it turns into tasks. See, I might have already been giving it. Yeah, I was giving it tasks. But if I say, I need to check on um, my finances and make sure I'm not broke. Um, my grass is looking dead. Um, I'm really feeling tired and um, it is starting <laughs> my cat is annoying me <laughs> let's see what it says well uh. it didn't do much there well <laughs> I, so i think because i'm giving it more specific things rather than just talking about how i'm feeling or whatever i haven't really used that one the other one is chef so Basically, it's going to tell you what ingredients you have. So let's say I have a pear, I've got tomatoes, I have wine, um, I have asparagus, and I have mayonnaise. None of this sounds very good. Dish name, pear and asparagus salad with tomato wine dressing, size serve two. And then it's going to tell you the ingredients and it's giving you the instructions on how to make it. Hmm. Anybody want to try it? <laughs> no, thanks. No, that doesn't sound good to me. Well, you never know. Maybe it'll come out decently. So anyway, <laughs> the chef will allow you to put any amount, any list of ingredients that you have so you could just go look in your refrigerator. What do I have here? Give it some things, and then it will come up with something. Chef's and by the way, cool. on the on these last couple of things, you'll notice there's a button "Send a Result to the Magic to Do." So then it's putting it in that list for you to do this. Um, could so you anyway, add a cat to the list? See what happens. <laughs> cat. <laughs> It seems to have ignored it. <laughs> Good. As it, as it should. So anyway, that's that is um Good on you. tools. And so Goblin Tools has a lot of different tools in there, as you can see. All right. The next one, I've got some image things. Um, this one takes a little time, but you can come up with images like this one. My son wanted a Ferrari race car, so you can see what it came up with. Um and so you can tell it, like over here on these tools, different contrast. You can tell it, like, what kind of style do you want it to be? Um, and, and so you, you can have these different styles. So anybody want to suggest um, something you want to see it make? Hmm. Cat with a machine gun. What with a machine gun? Cat with a machine gun. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes it can take up to a minute. Well, error. Okay. It's inappropriate, it says. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, how about... Calico cat. Oh, come on. Get out of my way. Dancing calico cat. I could have, yeah. And sometimes this can take like up to, you know, 45 seconds or a minute to generate stuff. Uh, Glenn, do these come out as uh, emoji size or are these regular 
PNG or TIFF, si TIFF size files? Um, good question. I don't want to click on, I I'll click on, okay. There you here go. We go. Now you can modify your prompt with IA, like you can see here, you know, add a red hat or make it vintage and you can change it. So let's click on one of these here. And you can see here, um, oh, that's for, you can organize your collections. You can download the image. Um, I can copy it, um, but you have tokens that you can use and then you run out and you have to buy more. Um, uh, this is new upscale the image. Um, what does that say? Upgrade. Yeah, premium. So I don't know if this will just let me download it or not. So I, I don't know if that's the actual full image or not. And it gives you a set of four of them. I can ask for, you can see here the dimensions and you can make it the, like large as a premium feature, but I can do smaller, medium, um, number of images. Well, you know, it's like you just have to start paying once you start doing more of, whoop, sorry. Yeah. Well, okay. It didn't like this, so you know. Well, let me. Go. Okay. Well, that's Leonardo AI, so I don't want to have to deal with doing all the login and stuff again. I apologize. Leonardo. Right, the AI. next one is AI Dungeon. So, if you enjoy um, the old style text-based adventure games, this is what this would be. So you can create your own gaming environment or you can use somebody else's. So you can see down here, I was playing with this one. Somebody created, a, they had a Star Wars universe one. So I was just trying it out and I was playing this character for a while. And so I kind of followed its prompts and then I started playing and, and it was taking me through this adventure and I was working with this guy and, you know, we were in, but you can do, all kinds of genres. So they have people that have created genres already. Um, you can see some of the things down here. And, and like I said, some of them will have images. And if you upgrade, you can get more image-based type of things. But it's basically kind of like the old text-based adventure games. And so, like I said, you can see people are creating all kinds of different you know, genres and adventures and things like that. This was the one, by the way, I, I found that I was trying. Or you can like create your own. So um, if you're into gaming or text-based stuff like that, um, you know, and some of them are, a lot of these are based on real things like Star Wars or like Hermione here, that would be the Harry Potter universe. So, you know, you can go in and and you can, you know, literally play the game along with them and you can say prompts i want to do this and then you can do that kind of thing so that is ai does it require risk you don't need a prescription then um if you he... have to there's a free um subscript you know just you sign up and then if i go to ai uh you know premium you get you can do more things you can generate more images um, you can save more adventures, those kind of things. Because you are somewhat limited with the basic free um, subscription. And it's 10 bucks, then it's 20 and 15. Yeah. yeah, this is free is what you get. And then it yeah, yeah goes up from there. Nice. All right. Um, why will you not let me do this? Okay. I have to keep moving the the zoom pictures to work around my screen. All right. Our next one here, I, I don't want to take too long. I need to have enough time for other stuff. This is called Avatar, and you can create little avatars to use with software. Here you guys can see, I made one of me. I uploaded a picture and obviously I've got my vision pro on um, just, and I chose what I wanted my outfit to look like. Uh, I said, just jeans and a, you know, button down shirt um, they had weird ones during the World Cup. I, I made myself with a mohawk and an Argentina <laughs> jersey. And so you can make these. Um, they're really meant to be shared with specific software, but 
again, I can just do a screenshot and take this thing and now I've got the image. Um, and so to do this, if I want to create a new one, I'm going to use my camera. And what you're going to do is it's going to have you take a picture from straight on and then like from each side of you. And that's how it's creating your likeness. And so you've got mm -hmm. to do that to start that. You can also upload images, but you got to have, I could take these and just upload, you know, I don't have to do it live like that, but that's how it creates your likeness. All right, Crayon AI is another photographer or another uh, image thing. But you notice here, you can say, well, I want a photo or I want a drawing or I want a vector image. And again, you can pick what you want. Somebody want to vector what something? Do? What's that? What will vector do? Uh, a vector image is one that's created in programs like Adobe Illustrator. And so like when you resize, um, it doesn't distort when you like a JPEG, you, you can actually resize it and it will it won't distort the image. Okay, I was wondering. Anybody want to give me one? No one? Mm -hmm. I like the guy with the machine gun. <laughs> let's go hockey player and let's do drawing. You can also actually draw and it's not changing much, but that's what it's giving me. I like that. I got Putin. Yeah. Oh he actually, my God. Yeah, Putin actually does play hockey, by the way. So, um, so anyway, that's another image one. Okay, our next one, gammas, is very interesting and very complex. So the idea of gammas is to um, help you can create um, presentations with it. So I did one because we were talking about free form just to um, kind of try this out. And I asked it to make a presentation on Apple free form and I created these slides. Hmm. And so it basically created the presentation for me um, or you can give it like notes or whatever and it will it will create a presentation for you. And then you can, you know, click here to present it. It'll go into presentation mode. You can edit the theme, um, that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, this would take a little while to really do something here live. But basically, it's using AI um, to, you know, create content and, and other kind of things that you might want to use. Well, and when you did the... Um... Freeform thing, did you have to input all the data, the information? I did not. Well, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't remember because I, it was, well, I couldn't, I, since I just viewed it, but I, I did that a number of months ago. So yeah. I don't remember what I gave it about Freeform. Um, so you can upload like notes you have, you could upload, you know, whatever source. I, I think you can also... Um, give it a source to look for and it, it'll create content for you. So if I want to create like something new, um, you can see here, I can paste in text. Um, I can give a one line prompt that it'll generate something or I can import a file or a URL. So if I wanted to do something like on, you know, a something Apple, I could give a URL to something and then it would create that. Um, so. You know, I did this, uh, like I did one about, tell me about the St. Louis Cardinals. And I found it really was not very good. Um, it, it was too. Oh, well, they aren't good this year either. So yeah, it, <laughs> the results, I wasn't happy with the results. Like it was pretty generic. Um, it could have been more specific. So if I do this, continue, pick a theme here, you see. Um, you know, I can choose, let's say I pick a theme and that's what it's going to look like. I can hit generate. And there you go. It's creating, 
what I didn't like was like, for instance, the images are gen these generic images. It's not using like, you know, real images of, you know, mm -hmm. stuff. And so I, I thought that it did a poor job of that. Now I could give it the images um, and, and it could, you know, you could use that and stuff. So, but that's kind of what, what it does, but it's, it's kind of an interesting tool. I thought there. Okay. This one character AI, my eight year old son loves this. He will spend hours playing with this. And I actually got this because my wife was watching um, a presentation, a fellow teacher did and was showing um, how you could use this for like, if you were teaching, you know, some literary stuff from a book or something like that, or a movie, you could have them interact with the character. So, and, and people create, there's all kinds of, you know, characters here that people create. Let's try this George Washington one. And by the way, you can put, um, This is obviously. I want to go. I wanted to do a new one. I don't know. Do, do Darth Vader. <laughs> well, these are ones my son, my son and Darth Vader were saving puppies around the galaxy <laughs> last week or whatever. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> um, yeah, two Betty Whites. Yeah, that's because people have created them. I and you'll see there'll be pictures, and you can even have their voice in here so that you can have them talk to you with their voice. But like George Washington, I can message him. So let's say, what do you think of today's political parties? And George is saying, I think the political atmosphere of our nation is strayed far from my own vision and dreams for the nation. I don't like the idea of having only two political parties fighting each other. We are the United States of America, yet we are divided as ever. By the way, that's something that George Washington really probably would have some kind of similar answer because he was not a fan of political parties to begin with. Um, anybody have a question you want me to, or something you want me to say to him? What's his stance on slavery? <laughs> He really didn't do it, by the way. So <laughs> that's a myth. Yeah. But you can see, you could sit here and just have a conversation. And I have found the kids love this stuff. That's why it's a great thing to use in school. But my, you know, my son just loves it. Wait a minute. Let's go over to Steve Jobs here. <clears throat> What do you think? Uh, anybody have something? Of the iPhone 16. What's the product they died, They killed the airplane, was it? Or the car? Car? The what? Did they kill a car or an airplane? Oh, I don't the car's been from... dead for a while. Glenn, how about just the Apple Watch? Oh, that's going to be wild. Um, what do you think of Bill Gates? I'll put, did you get a, along with Bill Gates? Complex, yeah. Um, When it's almost eight o'clock. All right. So anyway, you can sit and have conversations. You can make your own characters. You can use ones that are made by other people. And, and, and so it, it can be a lot of fun. All right. Well, I got one more here I'll do. This is called Suno, and you can create your own songs. 
So I think I, I played this one, if I remember correctly. You guys tell me. Yeah, well, you uh, do that a couple months ago. Yeah, um, I can redo it again. Um, tell me if you guys can hear it. I did a couple. It'll it'll make a couple versions of this. Um, let's see. Let's try old tech trails. And I did it about Cap Mac and Gamug. Um, let's try playing this. Tell me if you can hear this. Can you hear this? In the heart of St. Louis by the river's gentle sway, gathering of light, Gamuba came to play. Legends about the iPhone with each meet they share from the first lit screen to the future in the air. Down in Austin, where the live oak trees bend, Cap Mac folks with guided tech tales to blend. With iPads in their hands and Macs on their lap, every new feature mapped in their tech savvy trap. Oh, 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 oh. Apple hearts beating strong and true, from city to town in red. So, what you can do here is you can create your own thing. So, let's create. Um, okay, what do we want to write a song about? Uh, our baseball team. Okay. Um, Is there hope for the baseball team? Yeah. Right. Uh, what, what kind of music do you want it to be? A dirge. <laughs> Dirge, <laughs> fugue, sad, melancholy. Okay, write a mel melancholy song about the downfall of the St. Louis Cardinals baseball baseball team. I don't, and the more details you give it, the more. Okay, sorry, I can't type the more it will fill in stuff. Okay, so it's creating, you can see down here, it'll give you two versions. Cardinal tears. <laughs> Play the one it's got. Okay. All right, so they'll give you two different versions. So let's hear this one. Once they soared so high in the sky, rivers bright under the lights. Now they're trapped in shadows deep, lost the game they couldn't keep. Echoes yeah. of the crowd gone silent, empty seats where fans once cheered. Memories of glory fade, dust settles where legends play. So it will write lyrics based on what you give it. The more specific, the more detail it will add. Now, here's another, uh, they'll give you two versions. Here's the other version. It'll use the same lyrics, but it'll change how it sounds. Yeah. Once they soared so high in the sky, red earth bright under the lights, now they're trapped in shadows deep. Lost the game they couldn't keep. The ballad <laughs> so and, and you know and it, it'll give you a decent amount of lyrics and it it i mean that writes pretty good songs like you know i gave you the tech one that was kind of a folk one i also did like an electronic pop one by the way i can't say gamma it says gamma gamma <laughs> So you can see, you can give it many different genres. I mean, it, it's a pretty cool program. This might be my favorite one. Um, I did one, um, let's see, it was, yeah, a rock one about like running. Um, 
thing I saw. So you can see it's like a rock kind of thing. So it's a Suno is a pretty cool product. I mean, you can, you know, you can really make your own music with this thing. And it's, you know, my family and I, we've kind of just sat around and had fun with topics and created stuff and songs. So it, it's a lot of fun. So, so anyway, any questions on these before I end this? Yeah, you should send that Cardinal Tears to the Cardinal organization. I'm sure they <laughs> want that. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I, I realized, you know, again, that we we could probably do the whole meeting just with this stuff. So, um, but obviously the main thrust tonight is supposed to be iOS 18. So Ron's right, I need to wrap that up. Um, so as Ron said, we're gonna kind of do, you know, people, anybody have any questions? And this is the idea was to give me a break for a couple of minutes. So I'm not just talking to you for two hours. Yeah, if anybody has a question or a comment, to the group, now's the time. Richard, do you have any update about your success yeah. or lack of it? Yes, um, I came here hoping to meet uh, Carl Zimmerman again, but uh, he's not here tonight. But uh, uh, we did work through a whole lot of uh, little floppy disks that I had, which recorded um, a lot of information from old journals and things that I had, and I wanted to get those back to uh, um, see what was uh, what was happening way back. And uh, I just realized that uh, January 14th, 1970, I met Spiro Agnew. Okay. I don't know if you remember who he was, but uh, nice. he came out to Australia to give some moon rock to the... Uh, uh, and I was a, worked at a space tracking station at the time. Uh, memories are almost forgotten, and I was able to get all that back from uh, what uh, Carl and I had worked on. He still got some hard drives of mine from earlier, of later machines, and I'll be back in touch with him tomorrow to uh, see he needed some uh, dongles and connections to fix that up. So thank you very much for your help with all of that. It's... Uh, I look like I'm being able to recover both uh, documents and images uh, that I had thought were uh, lost forever. So thank you again. Congratulations, Richard. Uh, yeah, I won't awesome. be here next time. One of the problems is I have, I'm have a member of three different organizations that all meet on the second Tuesday of the month. <laughs> uh, Seems and, to be a popular uh, day. So, uh, but I'll, I'll do what I can. Thank, thank you cool. again. Well, anybody awesome. else have a question or a comment for the group or I have a question because the officers didn't seem to have a problem but ever since I have upgraded to the new systems they are sucking my battery life like there is no tomorrow and I'm getting it um, you know on my phone on my MacBook Pro anybody else experiencing this when did you update to the 18.01 because it said no, it was no change, no change, huh? Yeah, I mean, like I've been on here for what an hour and twenty minutes, and my battery is went from hundred to sixty percent. Normally, Ouch. I would be maybe you know with doing Zoom, that's a little more, you know, battery intensive. But I I, I would be maybe more like eighty or something. Yeah, I mean, it's just like I'm getting my battery is draining way faster. And I have no idea. It's the only thing that changes the system. My wife had a similar thing happen, Glenn. Uh, now, she and I got identical iPhone 16 Pros. Yeah. I haven't had much of a problem with the battery life on mine, but she had a pretty significant problem. And it turned. we got to thinking about it, and um, we had different people in the Apple Store helping us. The guy who helped her, the first thing he did was to set the set the, I keep wanting to call it the energy saver control panel, but I, I'm, <laughs> that's obviously not the right term. I think he set the display to where it would remain on all the time so that when he was doing things with it, the phone wouldn't turn off to save battery, forcing him to then hand her the phone so that she would have to sign back in. Right. Okay. So, and we, I discovered that setting, reversed it, but I think I discovered it maybe 
two days ago, and I haven't had a chance to see whether changing that setting back made much of an improvement. I asked her, I think yesterday, had, had she seen improvement? She says not much, but it had only been a short time. So I, I don't think that's a that's an unusual situation. Um, you know, just happened to have, you know, one guy in one Apple store did that to her phone. It took us a while to figure it out, and now we set it back. We'll see how much battery life we gain back. You know, I didn't change anything from before the update to after the update. I just ran the updates, and, um, you know, like I said, it's just I'm seeing not just a little bit, a lot of difference. <laughs> Buddy, you know, you, you you more than I, but I was looking at the Mac Geek Gab um, uh, podcast from a couple of days ago. Have those guys in recent times uh, dis discussed this or have they uh, had anybody who's brought it to their attention? I don't know, but I haven't listened the last couple of weeks to their podcast, John. So um, you know, it's possible they've discussed something and I, I just didn't hear it. Yeah, Although they, I might, send, I might they, send them a message and ask. I was going to say they got tips and tricks coming out all over the place. So yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if somebody has written into there. If this if this is phenomenon is at all widespread, it wouldn't surprise me if somebody's written into them asking their advice, um, or, or maybe that, or maybe somebody who was having a problem found a way around it and sent that in as a tip. It's possible. Yeah, and and obviously there's something that you know in the new systems that isn't playing nice, but it's on all my devices. It's not just one device. I mean, it's my iPhone 15 Pro Max. It's my MacBook Pro. It's my iPad Pro. It's my Apple Watch Ultra. I mean, it's all of them. And I find it odd that like I'm asking people and nobody else is experiencing this. But, um, you know, like I would say like on my MacBook Pro, my battery is probably draining at I, I bet at least twice the rate that it was before the update. Which, on your MacBook Pro, which operating system were you at and which one did you update to? I can't tell you what I was at. What, what all I can tell you, Terry, is that it was the latest update because I update always. I always run every update that comes out. And now I'm at, you know, for the MacBook Pro, um, I'm at uh, fifteen point oh one on my. So iPhone. you're saying going from fifteen oh to fifteen oh one gave you a battery, a uh, poor battery. No, from fourteen point, I think I don't remember what it was, like seven or something. Oh, okay, you you made a major revision, up, a major version update then. Yeah, I when I went to you know Sequoia on my MacBook Pro, or when I went from seventeen to eighteen on my iPhone. You know, same with my iPad. I mean, all of them. And like I said, I did not change any settings at all that I was using. But there's something in the new systems that just doesn't like what I have loaded or what I'm using. I, but I have no clue what it is. If these are all, since these are all major version updates, it makes me wonder if the new systems are just more piggish. It could be, but then they've, they've released the point oh one updates. I was hoping that would make a difference, but it hasn't. So I don't know. I wonder if these devices, you know, for, all, for, for those of us who have you know, pretty much the complete Apple ecosystem, I wonder if these devices are talking to each other more than in the past, using up more battery than they had used up in the past, trying to be more useful to us, but at the same time being maybe a little less useful because we have to keep the darn things plugged in so much. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I've thought about, you know, trying to call Apple, but I have a feeling they would, you know, just kind of poo poo it and say, oh, well, you know, we haven't really noticed anything <laughs> or, you know, it seems like when I ask a question like this, that's usually the answer I get. So, okay, well, are there any other questions? Because otherwise, I really need to start on the iOS 18 stuff or I may not get through it. Nope, let's go. All right, let me pull this up then and get this ready. Now, what I have done with this, guys, is some of these I'm going to talk about, but I've um, interjected little tiny short videos and, and kind of just changed them up from different people at different times. So that way you're not just stuck listening to me all night and me boring you to tears. So um, so that way I kind of a little, a little variety here. All right. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Got to get this out of the way. There we go. All right. So 
18 features of iOS 18 we're going to look at. Well, guys, as sure as a lot of you know, the iPhone 16 came out this past Friday. And, of course, I was first in line to get it. By the way, I thought this clip, it's not iOS 18 specific, but I don't know if anybody saw it, but I thought it was kind of. So, anyway, that was on recently, so I thought it was kind of clever, so I thought I'd just put it in there. All right, let's get into iOS 18. So, one of the big things you can do with it is your customizable home screen. And, it, you know, you've been able to do this, but they're increasing what you can do with it. So you can change most of the items now, including like a color and where you place your app icons on the screen. You can choose between dark and light mode. Um, so if you want to change this, just press and hold on the screen anywhere where, you, you know, everything starts to wiggle. And if you look up in the top left corner and you will see a little edit button and you want to click on that up in the top left. And then when you do this, um, when you press edit, you're going to get a drop down menu and you want to press customize. And then you'll get this little panel and you can pick between light and dark mode there. Um, you can also choose automatic. So it just kind of matches whatever your system settings are for stuff. Or you can do tinted. If you choose tinted, it's going to make all the icons a darker color with one single accent color. And you can actually go in and select whatever accent color you want to make it. Um, from the same menu there where it says small and large on the top, you can choose how you want your icons. If you click large, and I've, I've got an image here, you can see the difference. It's going to make your icons larger. But when it does that, you can see them better. It's nice. You see the difference if you look at these two screens here. But you notice you lose your labels. So they're bigger. They're easy to see the icons, but then you have no labels. So then you got to have to know what the icons are. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to figure things out, especially I've got everything nested in folders. So um, I, I've kind of put it on large and I like it. But sometimes I'm going, uh, which one is this? Because I don't have the labels anymore. Also on this little thing, if you click the little sun icon in the upper left, um, you can <clears throat> dim the background wallpaper or make it brighter or dimmer as you choose. Now, you can also do a lot of customization with control center. So, you know, for control center, you just swipe down from the upper right of your screen. And when you do that, you're going to see a little plus button in the upper top left. And you want to click on that. And when you click on that, you can now, you get this screen here and you want to press add control. You see there at the bottom, it says add a control. Click that and you're going to get a screen that comes up. And, and my picture here is just showing a portion. I mean, I, I could scroll down and there's all kinds of controls that you can actually add into control center. Um, and so you can, you can also take, you'll notice in that first screen that popped up there, well, the screen in the middle, um, it's got a little like corner thing. You can take and drag that to make things bigger and smaller. So that's kind of interesting as well in Control Center. All right, the third thing is you can customize your action button. Now, if you've got a 15 Pro or Pro Max or a 16, you have an action button. And so it, you, know, you can actually customize what do you want that action button to do? So to do this, you gotta go into settings and you select action button from your settings menu. And then you're gonna see, this is what it's gonna look like when it comes up. And you're gonna select the action you want by swiping left or right. And so like you can see here, I just have it set on camera. So if I've got it up, all I have to do is boom, hit that. I don't have to hit anything on the screen. Although lately I keep forgetting, I set my action button to do that and I keep tapping on the screen. So as you scroll through this, once you find what you want on that scrolling back and forth, you just leave it there and exit settings. That was a little confusing for me because I was looking around for, well, is there a button I got to press to set this? You just set it there and go out of there, and now that's what your action button will do. And for the action button, um, these are the things that you can do. So you can use it to go into silent mode. Um, you can use it to set up a focus, to turn on a focus that you may have. Um, you can control your camera. You can have it turn on the flashlight. 
You could have it uh, record a voice memo. You can have it recognize music. So it basically initiates Shazam to listen to whatever music's playing. Um, you can have it translate. Okay. So if you're, you know, from, you need a translation, you can set it to do that. So maybe if you're traveling to a different country, that might be a handy thing to have. Um, you can use the magnifier on your iPhone. I don't know how many of you use that, but that comes in handy and it, it can do it, do that. Um, you can also access your control panel stuff with it. Um, you can make shortcuts and have it initiate a shortcut or an accessibility thing that you want it to. So any of those things you can do with the action button. <clears throat> Excuse me. Am I moving too fast, guys? No. No, you're no. fine. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that I'm keeping on time here. All right. Fourth thing. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I've just been talking a while here. iOS 18 is going to tell you if the charger you're using on your phone is too slow. It's kind of interesting. So basically, you helps you find the right charger to use with your phone. So once you plug your phone in, go to settings and scroll down to the batter, battery. And when you go in there, it's going to, if, if you've got it set and you're using a charger that's slower than your ideal charging, it's going to tell you slow charger. So you guys can see here, if you've got a charger that really isn't optimal for your phone, you're going to see that slow charger and if you click the little orange notification that right there you'll see it'll it'll take you to an apple page and it'll tell you more about you know charging and things like that so i i found this to be extremely interesting that the phone is trying to tell you i think it would be it'd be nicer personally if it just popped up and said hey this isn't going to really charge your phone well <laughs> or whatever, rather than you having to dig into the settings to find out. But, you know, it's good to know if your charger you're using isn't really suitable for your phone. Well, if it says slow charger, is that something bad for your phone or is it just going to be slow charging? I think it's just going to be slow charging. I okay. mean, because typically Actually, if you're too fast. I've heard the idea be that it might be better for the lithium ion battery's health if it's charged slower rather than faster. Like some of these phones have fast charge options uh, that uh, it might be better for the health of the battery if it charges slower, if you don't mind waiting for the time to charge it. Right. And Terry's correct. And that that's what I was just starting to say, Terry, is that if you're charging faster, it's going to heat your phone up more and it's going to put more wear and tear on your battery. So I agree with what Terry said. It's probably better for the phone, but you're just, it's going to take a lot longer to charge. And, you know, I, it's one thing if you're doing it like overnight where you've got hours, it's not a big deal. But, you know, if you need to charge up before you leave, well, then, you know, it may not be the thing to use. But anyway, I just thought that was fascinating that they added that. All right, photos. I, I know photos has gotten a lot of scrutiny and some people are, you know, not not too hip on the new photos. I, I like it. Um, it. It's kind of interesting the way they lay things out. And um, what you've got now in the new photos app, and I don't know if you guys have updated this to this yet and played with it, but your recent photos are at the top of your screen. And then you kind of, you can see the next section is recent days. It'll show you things I recently took or albums are below that, your albums and it goes down. Your photos... What's interesting though, they're in chronological order from the bottom up. So right there above where it says recent days, when I took this picture, those are my most recent ones. And when I scroll up is where I find older photos. <clears throat> so that's a little bit different. Um, one thing I do like where it starts there, it's easier to reach with your thumb, especially on a bigger phone. And I don't necessarily have to use two hands to go up and do it. Now you can change the content there so um, basically, if you notice, well, before I get to that, I forgot there's an X. So if you are, if you look at the bottom right corner of the screen, I've got it highlighted here with a box, you'll find an X. And if you click that as you're scrolling up in your pictures, click that X and it'll jump you back down immediately to your newest photos. And that's pretty handy to get you back. So you don't have to just 
keep scrolling to get back where you, you know, to your newest stuff. Okay. Now you can decide what content you want in your photo stream. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom of photos, you will see a thing that says customize and reorder. If you click that, this screen will open up here and you can choose which things that you want in your feed. You can also reorder your list. So you just hold, you know, click and hold on the little three, the thing on the right, the little three, the waffle thing, and you just drag those and it'll change the order that they're in. So you can decide what order you, you know, how you want your photos layout. You can decide what you want included. You can decide, you know, what order you want them in. So I, I like the customization options of photos. Yeah, I like the new photos feature. I don't know what people complained about the old. The old Ron, one. I think people just complain about change generally. Yeah. <laughs> They're used to one thing and they don't like it changing on them, you know? Yeah. All right. Number six, messages has a lot of, of cool updates. And so I'm going to let uh, D. Griffin Jones tell you about uh, about five of them, I think it is. Today, I'm going to show you the five awesome new features coming to messages in iOS 18. Let's start with number one. Above the keyboard, you'll see a new button to the right for text formatting. Tap and drag to select the text. And then on the options on the top, you can apply bold, italicize, underline, or strike through formatting options. Below, you'll see various animated text effects. These can be applied to the whole text message or to a specific portion. You can have multiple effects apply to different parts of the same message. But understandably, you can't apply two different effects to the same word. A word can't be both big and small. That would be silly. Number two, an instant new favorite feature of mine is the ability to schedule text to be sent automatically in the future. If someone asks you to remind them of something at a future date and time, but you yourself struggle to remember such things, well, you can schedule your text message to be sent in advance. The great thing is that the other person doesn't need to be running iOS 18. You can start using this feature right away if you update or install the beta. By the way, um, I've been using that because a lot of times if I'm either up real late or I'm up real early and I don't want to text people at that time, um, since I updated, I've been using that quite a bit. Like this morning, I wanted to reply to a text from yesterday, but it was like, you know, 5.30 in the morning. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to send somebody a text. I scheduled it for 7.15 and it, it's real easy to do. It, it works great. Just hit the plus menu, scroll down and tap send later. You can type in whatever message you want, adding in links or images. Tap the schedule button above the text box to set a date and time. Messages can be scheduled up to a week in advance and tap the send button to schedule it. To get back to texting in real time, tap the X to close the send later box. And you can see all of your scheduled messages by scrolling down below the current conversation. You can tap edit for a few different options. Send message will send the message right away instead of at the scheduled time. Edit time will let you change the time and date that the message is sent. And delete message will make sure the message is never sent. Unlike deleting a text after it's already been sent, Deleting a scheduled message won't send an alert. To edit the contents of the message itself, tap and hold on the bubble and tap edit. Again, unlike editing a message after it's been sent, you can edit a scheduled message an unlimited number of times and the edit history won't be shown. Number three, if you want to react to a text message, but find the Facebook style six options a little limiting, you can look forward to iOS 18 where you can now react using any emoji. Tap and hold on a message just like before, and you'll see the same six options as before, but now rendered in full color. You'll swipe over to see some of the more popular emoji, or you can tap the emoji button to bring up the full list. Instead of the basic, aha, uh -huh, like it's 2005, you can react using the skull emoji. Or if you want to confuse someone, you can react with man in business suit levitating or aerial tramway. Number four, every iPhone owner has a few people in their lives with an Android phone. No judgment, it can happen to anybody. Sometimes people just don't make very good life choices. But then you go to text them a video of your cat or your human child, 
and for some reason, it sends with the resolution of a postage stamp. Now in iOS 18, if you're texting somebody on a supported Android device, SMS messages will be upgraded to RCS, or Rich Communication Services. That means that photos and videos will be sent in much higher quality than before. You can even send audio messages or files too. You'll get read receipts and typing indicators if you have those enabled. You can even send emoji tapbacks, just like an iMessage, using any emoji. RCS messages still appear as green bubbles, not blue bubbles. That's because there are still a few features exclusive to iMessage. Only iMessage is securely end-to-end -end encrypted, supports inline replies and threading, named group conversations, and iMessage apps. Number five, if you ever get lost in a spot with no cell signal, before it goes on, I just want to say that is real nice. My in-laws, you know, have Android-based phones. And, you know, I try to send them videos of my son. And, and they're like, oh, we can't see this. It's so small. Now I can send it to them and they can see it just as if I was sending it to an iPhone user. So um, it, it works. That really works nice. Well, like if you're hundreds of miles out in the Gobi Desert or in New York, you can now send full text messages over satellite. Satellite connectivity will work anywhere you can see the sky. This feature is available for the iPhone 14 and newer, which first introduced satellite connectivity. Previously, you've been able to send limited messages and contact emergency services, but now you have full access to messages with emoji and tap backs and everything. Well, not quite everything, you still can't send photos Washington. because of the limited bandwidth. Well, it's currently free for iPhone 14. And yes. He's talking about sending text messages over satellite. Yes. Is there any um, limitation on how many of those you can send? Uh, are they really intended only for emergency? Or can people do that for frivolous reasons when they lack a cell signal? That's, I, I don't actually know the answer to that, but I can tell you that, um, so I'm on Verizon and they had like all kinds of nationwide outage problems about a week ago and immediately it was popping up for satellite and I could send it, um, you know, I sent my wife a text saying, hey, I, I don't have any cell service, this is going by satellite. I mean, is that satellite system going to be able to handle the load if people start using it frivolously? I have no idea. That's a good question. <laughs> I guess there's one way we'll find out. I, yeah, I, I can't answer that. I don't know. 15 owners. Apple has indicated it will be part of a paid service going forward. Yeah, that, that is Apple what hasn't they're carrying on. Right now it's free, but at some point you're, it's going to be a paid thing to be able to use it. I guess when enough people start using it, that it puts a load on it, then they're going to start charging, and then that will manage how much people use it. Maybe, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What features will be free and what will be paid, or what the pricing will be, or how billing will work when you're abandoned in the middle of a desert. But speculation is that emergency messages will continue to be free, while full messages access will be a paid feature, with a limited free trial for those who buy an iPhone 16 this fall. So those are the five awesome new features coming to messages. Remember to like and subscribe to see more of our videos on iOS 18. I'm Deacon from Jones with Cult of Mac. All right. Yeah. So Messages has some nice upgrades. Um, I like the formatting stuff in there is real nice. I like the, you know, being able to schedule a text and send it later. Because there's a lot of times that I want to text somebody. I'm like, uh, you know, it's too late or it's too early. But then I won't remember to do it later. So it's nice that I can schedule that. So I And, and like I said, I, I like being able to send videos and images now to non-iPhone users and them actually being able to see them because I don't know if you guys have experienced it, but yeah, the, like I'll send stuff and people will be like, man, I can't see it. It's so tiny um, in the past. So that, that I'm glad that they have corrected that. Today, I'm... All right. Number seven, you can lock and hide apps on your iPhone. So you can actually lock individual apps um, now, when you do this, you'll require some kind of secondary authentication via either Face ID or Touch ID um, to open up that app, even though your iPhone is unlocked already. So, like this would come in handy if, you know, you unlock your phone, you give it to somebody to look at something, but.
but you don't maybe want them opening other apps. Maybe it's, you know, financial apps or, or whatever, you know, you can have stuff locked and um, if they try to open it, they'll just see a pop-up informing them. They, they can't access that without authentic authentication, which you would have to then step in. So to do this on your home screen, press and hold on the icon for the app that you want to lock and you'll get a little contextual menu pop up and you want to tap require face ID or touch ID, depending on your phone. And then it'll do it again and you have to confirm it. So you'll see that little confirmation thing. Then in addition to being locked, you can also hide apps. So when you go to lock the app, it'll also ask you if you want to hide it and you can click there, hide and require face ID. And then you'll get that little confirmation. I just used Venmo as an example here and it was, it'll do it for any app. It's not just a Venmo thing. <clears throat> now to unlock an app that's locked, you just have to long press on the apps icon and select don't require face ID option. And that'll turn the lock off. Um, and, and it'll require a face ID scan to do that, but you can also then, you know, unlock and turn it off. By the way, if you hide apps, to find them, you have to swipe over to your app library and there's a little thing down there. You'll find a folder hidden and you notice it doesn't show what's in there. It just has, you know, blank boxes there. And you have to basically, um, when you go to that, you have to press on it and then it'll require your face ID to reveal its contents. So like I said, if you've got sensitive stuff there or whatever, you know, you can, you can lock this stuff or you can hide it as you want. All right, number eight, the calculator app. Man, calculator app has got some really cool stuff in there. And by the way, on the iPad, there's actually a calculator app. So that's really cool. Calculator, this is the last app we're gonna talk about today. Math the notes, we kind of showed you this earlier, but if you tap the little calculator in the bottom left-hand corner, you see math notes, just tap on that. And there you can compose notes either via written or via, well, I guess drawing with the stylus. If you have an iPad or with your hand, if you have an iPhone, it's obviously gonna be better with the iPad with the Apple Pencil, but you can also type in your various equations like that, like I showed you earlier. And then of course there's support for variables. So X equals six, X times nine equals 54. Cool, right? And there's also adjust numbers. So this is really cool. So if you're writing an equation, you could tap on that one of the numbers and adjust the numbers like that. And it automatically updates the result, which is Pretty awesome, especially if you have some complex equations. I can see how that could be super handy. Why didn't I have that in school? Huh. And there's also graphing. So you can write out an equation and get a graphical representation of that. Just insert graph. And it'll actually draw your graph just like that. Pretty awesome. And you can also have notes integration, like I showed you earlier. So math notes, you see your graph in there that we just that we just created. And math results also can appear in other apps like in messages. So five plus five equals 10. There we go. And this is really cool. Editable expressions. This is something that we did not have in previous versions of the calculator, uh, but now you can actually edit an expression before you submit it. So you can go back and say, hey, I didn't mean to put six, I meant to put three. You couldn't do that on previous versions of iOS, but now you have that ability here in iOS 18. And there's also history, which he just builds on that, makes it even better. So now you tap the little history button in the upper left hand corner, you can view all your history, it's sort of like a little ticker tape, and then just go ahead and insert that expression right there. And you have unit conversions, man, iOS 18 is awesome, man. Calculators just going crazy, unit conversions, having all this ability to convert British pounds to US dollars or euros to pounds or yen to, to uh, rubies or, you know, there's all sorts of cool things. 
And then portrait scientific calculator. Why? Why didn't we have this before? So previously, if you want a scientific, you would have to turn it like that. But now you get it in portrait mode. So ladies and gentlemen, that is. I love a couple of things I love. I love the the whole math notes thing. I just think that is so awesome. I love how, you know, you saw when you draw the number and I've done this where you can change it with the little dial. That's just so cool. Um, I, I love the unit converter in there. It's like I've got unit conversion apps on my phone that now I pretty much can get rid of because you can do this stuff right in calculator. So um, they've really added some cool features to the calculator app. Lynn, do we know how frequently the currency conversions are up update? I have no idea, but my hope would be that at least once. I mean, I, it's daily. I, I would think. I would think, frankly, if you're connected, you know, it would. Whenever you're looking, it would look for it real quick. But I, I don't know the answer to that. Calculator. All right, now. Let me take math notes a little further because let's talk about the notes app. Um, there are some really, really, really cool updates for the notes app. And the first one I want to talk about in there is math notes. So it also works directly in the notes app. You don't have to just do this in the calculator. So if you use, um, you know, you first of all, when you use math notes in the calculator, it automatically creates a note a separate note that is called math notes that you will find in your notes app. And if you do stuff with that, that it'll have it there, but you can also create, um, you know, your own apps and use stuff with interesting variables. So I just, as an example here, I did food costs. So at the store this past weekend, I just looked at the cost of some different items. And so therefore I could do this for you. And I, I, I just recorded myself doing this. I'm in a note. I just created a new note. I called it, um, you know, food cost. So I just said uh, the apple I looked, and it was a dollar six, a dollar four. Um, I looked at a banana, and the cost for the banana was what was it? Twenty four cents. And the tomato was 32 cents. So then you can write, you know, it, it knows those variables. You've defined the variables, apple plus banana. Sorry, I can't type this any faster on the phone, plus tomato. I'm not a teenager, I can't type faster, equals. And it gave me $1.60, 1.6. Now you'll now see here, if I go back and let's say I took out banana, and as long as I have the equals there, I hit equals, Bam, it recalculates it to $1.36. Yeah, two One tomatoes would great. Yeah. So um I by the way, I tried this with using like the Apple symbol or the banana symbol emoji stuff. Wouldn't do it. But you notice here, I, it's not just, you know, I can multiply them and it, you know, gave me the answer there. So anything you do once you if you as long as you define the variable. And then you, you know, put the equal sign, it will calculate it for you. And that's in notes. That's not the calculator app. Um, like I said, though, I, I tried it where I, I took the word apple and I made it, you know, like the little apple emoji. And I took the banana and made it the banana emoji and the tomato emoji, but it wouldn't do that. It, it, it couldn't figure that out. So that, that wouldn't work. But that's very cool. All right. So another thing in notes you can record a voice note and get a transcript now. Um, I think this is awesome. Love this. Um, it's a built-in audio recorder that will capture and transcribe voice notes. And if you've got an iPhone 12 or later, this will work for you. Um, you can record audio directly, and this is within a note, and it'll automatically transcribe the audio so you don't have to use like separate apps to record and transcribe and share. Now, this is without Apple AI, because as we all probably know, Apple AI will not be working until 18.1 update here in the next month. Um, once you get Apple AI, then it's going to, you can ask for summaries of transcripts and it'll do that. 
So let me show you a little video how this works. In the Notes app, you can embed audio recordings, perhaps minutes of meetings or conversations you've had with a colleague, or maybe just ideas that you want to kind of get onto a piece of paper. But not only can you record just the audio, Notes will also do a live transcript for you in the audio into text. So all we need to do is press the attachments button down here, and then we're going to choose audio. Then we're going to press record. And then I can simply start talking into the iPhone or have the iPhone on the table in the middle of the meeting, and it will pick up all the voices in the room. You can see it's recording down below. And then when I press the stop button, I can then access the live transcript. Tapping on here will bring up a text log of everything that I've just said. And of course, I can add this to my note simply pressing the more options button in the top. And then I can simply add this text in the body of my note. You'll see now my note has got that audio recording embedded at the top and then the actual text of the conversation down there underneath. Of course, you can make changes to it if you need to, perhaps just misheard a word or two, which can be quite common. But then you've got that option then to keep that text and use it for whatever you want in the future. And that's just another way that iOS 18 has leveled up your iPhone, unlocking new abilities and new tricks. And if you... So that's really nice. I, I don't know how many of you would find that useful, but I find it useful um, for a number of things to have that transcript of stuff. Or if I'm, you know, listening to somebody speak, I might want that, et cetera. Okay, another notes uh, feature here is collapsible sections. And so it allow you to better organize your notes. I love this. I use notes a ton. I don't know how many of you do, but notes is literally one of my most used apps on my phone. Um, and I am constantly keeping it with me. Like when I'm coaching, I no longer carry around a clipboard or you know, a pen and paper, everything I do now is with notes and I've got all of that right there for me. So this is awesome. I, I, I love this. In the notes app from iOS 18 onwards, you can now have collapsible sections to better organize your thoughts and ideas, which is really handy, especially if you've got a long, long list of notes. Here, I've got my schedule for the week, just a rough one that I've made for this demo. And you'll see that under each day there's a few different activities that I need to do. But at the moment, this is just a normal note. I could add to this forever and ever, and it would just keep on scrolling. I want to add some collapsible sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the name of my section, so Monday to begin with. And when I've highlighted it, I'm going to press the text format button below. From here, I can choose some different styles of text, the body, subheading, heading, and title. I'm going to go for heading for this. And when you do that, you'll notice a small gray arrow appearing before Monday. That's now an automatically collapsible section. But at the moment, it will collapse the whole note because that's the only heading that I've got. So while I'm talking, I'll quickly go through the other days of the week and also format them to make them headings too. And as I do that, you'll notice those little gray chevrons and simply tapping on the day of the week and then tapping on that gray chevron will either expand or contract the actual section that I've written. That means I've now got five collapsible paragraphs and I can just look at the days that I need to look at for this week. But you can actually nest these sections together, which means you can have a section hidden inside another section. And you're going to do this by using the text formatting hierarchy. So up until now, we've used headings to make our different sections. If I were to paste something at the top and make it a title, which is bigger than the heading, that then will contract everything underneath it until the next title comes along. So you can nest your different things together using formatting. And then just like this, I can minimize the whole week, or I can expand it and jump to the day that I want to look at. And this is... So I think that's really cool because I've got notes that are quite lengthy. And I, you know, try to organize them myself, but this is an, uh, just an awesome, awesome feature I'm really thrilled with. In the notes app from iOS 18. Okay, the next notes thing is um, <laughs> it, it can actually help improve your handwriting by refining it um, if you use like your finger, you know, just to draw something or whatever. Um, it will take it and it will um, make it look better, basically. Here's a fun little update to the Notes app on iOS 18 that I suspect is probably more useful on the iPad, but also works on the iPhone. And that is the ability to convert your scratchy, scrawny handwriting into something a bit more legible. So in the Notes app, I'm going to use my finger to jot down a couple of notes. I can do that by pressing the little drawing icon on the toolbar here. I'm then going to scribble just the word hello. Now, my handwriting is certainly not the neatest in the world, and it's even harder when you're writing it on a phone using your finger, as I'm sure you realize. But when you've written that word, if you come out of the drawing tools and tap and hold on your handwriting, you get this little floating menu bar. Tapping sideways on here will eventually give you the option to refine your writing. 
tapping on here will use the AI built into Notes to make your writing more legible and easier to read. And as you can see, just like that, Notes has converted my handwriting into a slightly neater version of that same handwriting. If you didn't want to change it too much on that floating menu bar, there's the option to straighten your writing as well, so it will just level it horizontally for you. But I like the refine element here to make it look a bit neater. This will also work if you make a spelling mistake in your writing. So I'm going to just jot down a casual word here, subscribe. Don't know why I'd put that on a YouTube video, but I'm going to spell it wrong just for the sake of this demo. I can spell it normally, I promise. And as you can see, I've got that little blue dotted line underneath to tell me that that spelling is incorrect. Tapping on here will show me the correct spelling. And when I tap it, notes will change my handwritten text into the correct spelling in a version of handwriting that still looks like mine. It will kind of choose one that matches your style the best it can. I think this is a really cool feature. And as you can imagine, on an iPad of a pencil, it's probably way more effective. But for those quick notes that you jot down, which are going to be slightly rough and ready, this really does help make them a little bit more easy to read. So that's kind of a cool feature. Um, I mean, I don't know if you ever use your hand, you know, your finger to draw or whatever, or like said, an Apple pencil, but um, it, it's kind of neat. And they do try to, when they when they refine it, they try to make it look somewhat like your handwriting as best they can. All right, uh, share play, and you can use this to control another screen. So if you need to help somebody like on their iPhone, um, this is a cool feature. I'm gonna start out with share play and the ability to remote control other devices. By the way, for every category, I'm gonna put the title over here and how many features are available in iOS 18. Now, when you're in a FaceTime call with someone, you can actually request to see their screen. Tap the share play button, and then you can tap ask to share. The other person will get a notification and now they can share their screen with you. This is gonna be amazing for helping your family and friends. You can see if I go home on this iPhone, I'm actually seeing that screen here on the first. Not only can you ask to share their screen and even highlight so I can circle things on my iPhone and it will circle on theirs remotely, but then I can tap this symbol and that will bring up a permission dialogue on their device and they can allow me to control their screen. And now I'm actually controlling their device from mine, and this will work iPhone to iPhone or iPad to iPad. So I think that's great because I can't tell you how often somebody says, hey, what? how do I do this or whatever on my phone? And so that'll be a great way to be able to do that. I'm gonna start out with share play and the ability. All right, 14, AirPods head, head gestures. Now, if you own an AirPods Pro 2 or AirPods 4, you're supposed to be able to use head gestures to interact with incoming notifications by moving your head, shaking it yes or no. Um, to accept a call or notification, just nod your head up or down. To decline it, shake your head side to side. Now, to use these to interact with the S lady, you have to enable announce calls and announce notifications. So to do this, you gotta go to settings, go to apps, go to phone and have it announce calls. And then select something other than never on there and go back out into settings. And then you have to go down to notifications and then you have to announce notifications to make sure that to, for that to do it, you gotta turn these on to enable this. It's, it's kind of a pain. I wish there was a one step way to do that. And those automatically may be by default on in your phone already, but you'll wanna check those. Then next with your AirPods in your ears, Go into settings and press on your AirPods at the top where you see your, your name of your AirPods and then click on head gestures and you make sure this is turned on. So you see in my middle picture here and then at the bottom, press try head gestures and it'll take you to this next screen and it's going to have you test it out. I have found so far, this is very hit and miss. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. So it's a little frustrating at this point that it doesn't work all the time. I actually have not had, um, since I've been playing with this, I've not had my AirPod Pros in when a, a notification or phone call came in to be able to say, yeah, I want that or I don't. Um, I, I'm gonna probably test it out and just have my wife send me some stuff or a call just to test it out. So um, like I said, it's been kind of hit or miss with me. Okay, 15, uh, Safari highlights and hiding objects. I think this is really cool in Safari. But moving on to Safari, there are a ton of updates here. The first one being highlights, and there's lots of different highlights. So if you're looking at an article and maybe there's a person of interest or even a TV show, you'll see this symbol down here in the address bar. When you tap that, 
if there's people, you'll actually get a link to that. And when you tap that, it'll send you over to their Wikipedia article for a biography. Again, anytime you see the little star icon here, it means there's a highlight. And the additional highlight here was a TV show. If an article or website is mentioning a TV show, you might see it here linked in the highlights and tapping that will bring you to the Apple TV app. Another helpful highlight is going to be summary and table of contents. So if you're on a website like this, maybe doing some research, you can tap that highlight button. And not only do you get a summary right here, this is different than Apple intelligence summaries. These summaries are only available on specific websites that Apple has allowed. And if you go into reader mode, some websites will also give you a table of contents per article. Again, this is not Apple intelligence. This is built into iOS 18, but it's not available on every website. Try space.com if you want to try it out today. Another highlight is the place highlight. So maybe you're on a website, maybe it's for a hotel or restaurant and you just can't find the address. Well, a location highlight, when you tap there, will bring up the card from Apple Maps. We'll give you the hours if applicable, and then you can tap that location to jump to it in Maps. There's also music highlights, and one of the coolest features in iOS 18 is now high distracting objects. That means if you're on a website like this, and maybe there's newsletter signups and other ads, if I tap that highlight section again, you'll see high distracting items is an option. Again, this is iOS 18 specific. And now when I tap on a distracting item, like let's say this newsletter signup, it will just be hidden from view and I can enjoy reading the article without all those distractions. This is temporary. It won't happen for every page on this website. And if you refresh the page, you'll have to do it again, but it's a really cool feature to just Thanos snap away some ads and newsletter sign up. All right. Yeah, all right so so sorry, there are. Come on, sorry. All right, moving on to Safari. All right. Um, I've just got a couple more to get through. I know we're getting short on time, but if you give me just five extra minutes, I can finish this if that's okay. All right. Maps has added some nice features to save your walks and hikes. Um, so right. Moving cool. on to maps, you actually get topographical information when elevation is changing. So here, like on Mount Rainier, you'll see the topographical lines and even the elevation. And another cool feature is you can save hiking or walking routes right here in maps. So I went to the routes section here and I can just tap along the map different points. And this will actually create a hiking trail. I just want to go between those two points and back. I can tap close the loop and then save this route as a hiking route, name it whatever I would like, and even download it for offline use. You can even do this just for like neighborhood walks. So I saved a little neighborhood walk I used to do at our old house. And then you can see the distance, change in elevation, and even start directions for that walk. Also, now if you tap under your favorites right here, you'll see there's a new places library. You can quickly see your pit locations, those guides and routes. But if you go to places, now you can see all the different places you've saved. Maybe it's restaurants or places to get your hair cut. And you can add a place right here or tap the three dots and reorder it, view it in grid view, sort by date added. Lots of options there for places. So that's kind of neat with maps. It'll do a few of these things now. Right. Okay. 17 is the phone app itself. I know when we have this phone in our hands, I think sometimes the phone is the last thing we actually think about, but they've actually done some nice updates to the phone app and how it operates itself. And the phone app actually has some big updates too. Here in your call history, you can now search for people and that'll not only pull up missed calls or calls you actually took, but also any transcription results from voicemails will appear here in search. Keypad search, once you start typing a phone number, it will pull up someone's contact, but you'll actually see multiple results come up, both people and businesses. There's a new live caller ID lookup. So if someone's not in your contacts, you'll likely see who it's from. Dual SIM control in control center. But the biggest feature is the ability to record phone calls now. Now, once you've started a call on your iPhone, I can tap the record button up here it will notify the other person that the call is being recorded. And then as I'm talking and the other person is talking, it's recording both ends of the phone call. You'll see a new note is created once you start recording and you'll actually get a full transcription and the audio file of this recording once you end the call. I can stop the recording by itself here and then end the call. And now you'll see a new call recording section here in notes. I can go in, listen to that recording, and you'll also get a transcript of that call. Transcripts are not part of Apple Intelligence. This should be available to everyone. But when you do get that transcript, you can actually get an Apple Intelligence summary. That is Apple Intelligence specific. All right. And uh, I want to make a comment about that. Big updates too. Hold on. Yep. 
about recording calls. You, uh, if you're if you're on with a business or whatever, and you know where the business applies a message, we record our calls to a short for training and quality purposes. You hit the button to record them, and they hear it. I actually read a comment. Somebody posted online. This is not personal experience. I don't have iOS 18, but somebody posted online that the person that they're dealing with, the business that they're dealing with, hangs up. Uh, when they want to record the call, and that was just uh, that was just uh, interesting because that would be the kind of scenario where somebody might want to record a call if they're calling a business. Sure, I I agree. You know, and I probably would wait till you're actually talking to a person though, versus you know when you might just be in the system going through it. All right, the last one we have. Try these cool little features and a couple more mentioned but these five features but they're some cool things so that's why i included this little video for five hidden ios 18 features you'll want to check out first use a qr code to share your wi-fi password this makes password sharing easier with your android friends and others just open the new passwords app go to the wi-fi section tap on the network you want to share and hit show network qr code now all they have to do is scan it Second, adjust the beam width of your flashlight. And if you tap anywhere on the dynamic island, you can turn it off and on. By the way, that flashlight one, I've already used that and I find it very handy when I'm trying to use the light that I can change the beam and the intensity of it. It's much more useful than the old flashlight app. Third, turn off your iPhone from the new control center. Just swipe down and then press and hold down on the new power button in the top right. Fourth, you can hide the app names for a cleaner looking home screen. Just hit edit, then customize, and then pick the large option to remove the labels. And lastly, transcribe voice memos. In the voice memos app, tap your memo, the three dots, and edit recording. Then tap transcribe to create the transcription and done. So now when you use the search field, the app looks through the transcriptions to find results. That last thing was actually in the voice memos app, but it does similar thing that you were doing in notes. But I like that you can search for it and it'll look for terms actually in within those voice memos to search for it. Cool. For five hidden. That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right i know i was kind of trying to move quickly through that last you know the last stuff but um hopefully i you know there are a, a lot of other cool features i just picked out the things that jumped out at me and that i find have found useful so far um you know obviously there's other stuff that i didn't touch on and, and we're going to see a big um well i should say depending on the phone you have, <laughs> we're going to see um, some big changes in 18.1 when it comes out because that's an Apple intelligence comes out. But remember, you can only you'll only be able to use Apple intelligence if you have an i15 Pro Pro Max or an iPhone 16. So if you're dealing with older phones, you're not going to get that extra Apple intelligence stuff. And there you have it. Thanks, Clint. Uh, that was really cool. I hope it didn't move too fast and it was hard to follow. No, I think, and plus we have a recording, so you can go back and look at the whole thing if you want. Yeah, and I'll, again, as always, I'll send you the PDF of it to, so you can post that. Okay. And uh, sorry, I went over. <laughs> we, we spent a little extra time on the AI stuff er, uh, earlier tonight, so. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming tonight and hope to see you in November. Bye, guys. Which is, by the way, election day, I think. Or maybe yeah, that's no, our, our the officers meeting. Officers meeting. I'm sorry. That's it. Yeah, I won't be there. Good yeah. night. Peace and goodwill. <laughs> Take Bye. care, guys. Bye. Bye. See you around.